Hello and welcome to this month's edition of the Indiana State Police Public Information Program. I'm your host today, Sergeant Dave Burston, Public Information Officer for the Indiana State Police at the Indianapolis Post. Today we're going to be talking about the Indiana State Police Recruit Academy and the fact that we are preparing to take applications. As a matter of fact, not preparing, we are now taking applications for the next recruit school that will be starting March 31st of 1997. Uh, now you may be thinking to yourself, March is a long time away, but there's a lot of preparation that has to go into preparing for a recruit school. Now to help tell you a little bit about that, I'd like to introduce my first of three guests, Sergeant Nyla miller Cronk. Uh, Nyla, it's good to have you here. Thank you. And I appreciate you taking time from your schedule to, to share with us about uh, the Academy and what work goes into preparing the applications, and specifically, uh, well, tell people what your job for the state police is. I bet people don't realize we have recruiters just like the Army. I'm one of two recruiters that the Indiana State Police have. Um, our job is to go to the Indiana, Ohio, Illinois, Kentucky, and Michigan colleges, universities, and tell them about the Indiana State Police, hopefully entice them to come over to our department. So we're out there poaching from other states. Yes. So, okay. No, As they are from us. As they do with us, yes. too. So you cover the, the wide areas, and there's only two of you that uh, have that responsibility. Yes. I imagine you do quite a bit of traveling. Quite a bit, so. especially in the fall and the spring during college career days. So summer is your break time also, isn't it? Usually, except this year <laughs> we're getting ready for another recruit school. Well, speaking of that, let's, let's talk about uh, the recruit school. And before we actually talk about that, probably some basic information about what are the basic requirements to become an Indiana State Police Officer? Yes, uh, you must be at least 21 years of age when appointed. So that means once you get out of the academy and are appointed, you must be at least 21 years of age, you must be a U.S. citizen, you must be willing to reside anywhere in the state of Indiana after appointment, you must have a valid driver's license, you must have eyesight correctable to 2050, and you must have 60 semester hours or 90 quarter hours of college from an accredited college or university with a two, at least a 2.0 grad, grade point average on a 4.0 grade, grading scale. So it sounds like you, you went off that. You've got all that committed to memory too, don't you? Yes. <laughs> now people can get all that information. I, I, some people may have been taking notes as you rattled those things off, but that's all listed on an application, isn't it? Yes, it is. We send out application information packets that actually have our recruit, recruiting brochures in them, as well as an information sheet and an application. Now you mentioned the, the uh, 60 credit hours, that's or the quarter hours, whichever, depending upon the system the person may be involved in. That's something that has to be completed before they start the academy. Actually, it has to be completed before they submit their application. Okay. 60 semester hours or 90 quarter hours is equivalent to about two years, and it does not have to be an associate's degree. It just has to be the 60 semester hours or 90 quarter hours. And also to reiterate, you talked about uh, by turning 21 uh, at, a, at appointment, and I refer back to myself. I started in the academy uh, when I was 20, but my birthday happened during the training, uh, so that's okay to do that. Yes, it is. So thank And we you. have no maximum age date at this time. And with that, the only minimum age, again, is the age 21. Yes. Okay. Um, when you're talking about uh, somebody hears uh, an accredited college, what does that term mean as far as the hours counting? There are several regional accredited, accrediting associations in the United States. The one most familiar with us for our area is the North Central Association of Colleges okay. and Universities. Um, there are other accrediting associations as far as technical schools, but that does not apply for what, what we're requesting as far as accreditation. So it has to be a regional accrediting association. So, like I said, for our area, it's the North Central Association of Colleges and Universities. Now, aside from the basic requirements that you mentioned, and that's just to submit your application, I know that there's a, a, a long process through which the people have to go through. Uh, give a quick rundown of what happens once somebody submits their application. Okay. It's a six-month selection process. 
It begins, of course, with the application, and it must be complete. If it is not complete, it will be mailed back to you. So it's very important that you answer every question, that you include all the attachments that we ask for, which include your birth certificate, your college transcripts, you must have a recent photo attached to the application, as well as if you've been in the military, you must also have a DD-214 military record. And the military people will know what that yes, is. Yes, they will. So, um, you talked about a six-month process, so I assume that there's a deadline by which time applications have to be submitted. The application deadline for this recruit school is September the 20th. However, we do accept applications year-round. So if they happen to get in after the 20th, we will keep them on file for our next recruit school. And that's something good for uh, people that are watching the program today because this program will not be airing until September uh, during the month. So some people uh, may see it at the beginning, have enough time to submit their application. If you're seeing the program after September 20th, uh, don't let that dissuade you. Still complete the application and they're kept on file. Uh, some of the other questions I'm sure people like to know, uh, how much uh, is there, aside from what's the pay of a trooper after the academy, this is paid training, isn't that correct? Yes, it is. You receive $746 every two weeks, as well as all your uniforms and equipment is furnished. And that uh, the training is at the Indiana Law Enforcement Academy? Yes, it is. It's held at the Indiana Law Enforcement Academy in Plainfield, and it is actually an Indiana State Police Academy, which is different from the basic academy held at Plainfield. Uh, I think probably the last thing to tell people is uh, what can they look for as far as a salary base after completing training, assuming that everything's successful. Yes, uh, during their first year of probation, they will be making $22,438. That's without overtime. Mm -hmm. Following their first year, they will go up to $24,284. Um, and there are progressive increases up to 10 yes, years. Yes, very progressive. Uh, by the time you get your uh, 10 years on, it's going to be right a little over $39,000. So people that, can see definitely where they're going. Yes. So. That, that also includes a car. Oh, and, that, and that's that is, a big benefit. That is a very big benefit for personal use after, after your work. Of course, when you're driving that police car, you kind of feel like you're in a fishbowl. Yes. Everybody stares at you. Yes. So, Nyla, I want to thank you very much for uh, giving the, uh, the basic information for what's required. I appreciate the time that you've taken to come out here and share that with us. And for our viewers, if you're just now tuning in, we've been talking about the fact that the Indiana State Police is now uh, taking applications for the next recruit school to start in March 31st, 1997. And we've been speaking with Sergeant Nyla miller Cronk about the application process. After this break, we're going to come back with our next guest and we're going to learn about what happens in the Academy. So please stay tuned. doesn't just kill drunk drivers. Next time your friend insists on driving drunk, do whatever it takes to stop him. These are members of the Bentle family. On a Sunday in September, they went to church, and afterwards they met the driver of this truck on an Indiana highway. He hit their car head on. One major problem, none of them were wearing seat belts. This is Michael. Here's Megan, this is Cassidy, and Cheryl Bentle. I thought this would only happen to you, but this happened in my family. Wearing a seatbelt in Indiana, don't take it lightly. Hello and welcome back to the program. Uh, as you know, we are talking about the fact that the Indiana State Police is preparing to uh, accept applications for the next recruit school starting on March 31st of uh, next year, 1997. And our first guest was Sergeant Nyla miller Cronk talking about the selection process. And now we're very pleased to have with us uh, Sergeant Dave Benjamin. Sergeant Benjamin, thanks for making time to come out here. You're quite welcome. Glad to be here. Uh, before we talk about, well, I want to tell people what your position, position is. You are actually in charge of the, of the recruits at the academy. And before talking about your actual duties and, and what you do, tell us how long you've been with the department and about yourself. Okay, well, I'm uh, originally from Indianapolis. I, when I first started with the department some 25 years ago, 
I worked at the Seymour District and uh, worked at the Versailles District, which is both in the uh, kind of in the southeast portion of the of the state. And then I came to General Headquarters in 1979, where I was assigned to the Training Division, and I've been in charge of recruit training since uh, 1986. And I have some fond memories of you when I started in the, uh, you weren't in charge of the academy in, in uh, 1980 when I came on, but I, I have some very good memories of you and getting some uh, outstanding shooting skills and training from you. Uh, do you, are you still involved with that portion of the training? Well, I still do some uh, training. Most of the uh, responsibilities I have now are all administrative things. I, I don't spend a lot of time doing the actual hands-on training any longer, but I keep my fingers in it on occasion. Well, it, it helps keep you fresh. Absolutely. Nyla told us all about the selection process, and I'd like to take it from the point that the person has just received their letter saying that they have been uh, selected to start at the next recruit academy, and the day they arrive, which is typically the classes always start on a Monday. We normally they do, yes. Mm -hmm. So typically, uh, Monday morning, I'm sure everybody's nervous when they first arrive. Uh, what are their first experiences going to be? Well, you know, obviously when they receive that letter to report, that is an exciting day for them. And uh, as you said, they will report uh, usually between 7 and 8 o'clock on a Monday morning. And uh, they're greeted at the door by uh, our staff of counselors and directed uh, to go to a location where they will receive their equipment, uh, their uniforms, and the things that they'll need in order to be able to, do the, to uh, go through the recruit school. Um, the day is a very long one. As I said, we start our class normally starts at about 8 o'clock in the morning. Most of the first day is orientation things, administrative, telling them the responsibilities that they're going to be held accountable for uh, throughout the course of the recruit school. We will um, help them to get their room set up, tell them their expectations of what their uniform is supposed to look like, tell them about how to polish their shoes, make their beds, and all those kinds of things. Um, then uh, in the afternoon, normally of the first uh, day, we have our first physical training session. It usually starts at about 4 o'clock. And uh, that's normally about a 4 or 5 mile run, depending on the amount of time that we have. So it's very important for those who are coming to recruit school to come in in good physical condition. Sounds like a word to the wise there of, of just don't think, well, I'll start my physical training program when the State Police uh, Academy starts. You're probably going to be physically hurting. Absolutely. We, you know, we put a great emphasis on the academics of the recruit school. We, we think that that's probably the most important part, although uh, we don't downplay the physical side either because we, th we need to try to get a good balance between the physical uh, abilities of an individual as well as their mental, mental uh, abilities. I think most people are probably aware of the fact that the state police is a paramilitary organization and therefore the training is very much in a, in a military manner. And that's true. We, uh, we expect a lot of the yes sirs and no sirs and yes ma'ams and no ma'ams as, as, as applicable. And uh, we stress courtesy because uh, we figure if we can uh, impress that upon our students during the time they're in recruit school, we want that to carry over into their uh, daily life once they're away from the academy and they're out on the road because we think that uh, courtesy to the public is very, very important. So uh, we do conduct it in a military fashion. Uh, we, again, do some marching. We have military formations. And uh, many times, in the very, actually in the very beginning of the recruit school, uh, we're teaching people uh, how to think and then later on moving towards the aspect of, teach, of uh, teaching them to be able to think on their own. So that's where we move to. Now, in talking about where you move to in the course of the training, we talked about the opening day and a lot of the administrative things and people are wondering, who am I, where am I, what am I, and am I glad I'm here? Uh, now we've, uh, let's say we've progressed, we're into two, three, four weeks uh, down the road. What are some of the uh, classroom experiences and training uh, things that will be happening for them? Okay, the, uh, initially we try to front load the academy uh, itself with a lot of academics, a lot of the heavy academic work. Uh, we have a 78-hour in-classroom hour, in -classroom hour uh, criminal law class uh, that's very intensive. Uh, we also have a writing course, and those two items themselves are must-passes uh, for the academy. You have one, one chance at passing the test for that. If you're not, you are eliminated. So it's very important that you uh, have good study habits to accomplish those things. So criminal law and writing are two things that we emphasize up front. Uh, again, we have a, a great deal of physical training, and a lot of the other things beyond criminal law and uh, the writing courses are just general police topics, things that will get the police officer through his normal day. 
Another benchmark portion of the academy is firearms training. That's correct. And that's also a must pass, although we do do some uh, remediation training. If somebody's having a little difficulty, maybe can't pass it the first time, we'll give them some re remediation training, give them the opportunity or so. But uh, that's uh, something we put a high degree of uh, emphasis on being able to accomplish those things. That normally uh, happens about halfway through our school. Uh, once the criminal law is over and the pressures of that are over, then we begin to do firearms and a lot of the other hands-on type training. Uh, firearms, defensive tactics, we get into uh, first aid, uh, not only the classroom, but some of the first responder type things, bandaging and splinting and all those kinds of things. And those are important things, and I, it goes without saying that obviously uh, any police officer, city, county, or state may find themselves being the first on the scene or at a serious accident. You've got to have that basic knowledge of, of first aid. That's true. Uh, what do you think the high point of the academy is, if, if you were going to name one? Well, it just depends on whose perspective you're talking about. <laughs> uh, the high point for me, obviously, is the first day. I, uh, you know, I think that that's a very important step for the staff to get that first day started off right uh, and sets the tone for the way that the class will be run for the rest of the 20-week uh, school. I suppose the high point for the students would be graduation day. That would make sense. And uh, so that's uh, something that, that we try to prepare them for. Uh, Again, at the end of 20 weeks, that's a pretty long time, but they're, they're looking for their district assignments and uh, looking towards that day. Sergeant Benjamin, I'd like to thank you very much for uh, taking time from your day to come on the program. And so far, you've heard two points of it. You've heard about how to apply to the department. You've heard about what to expect uh, during the academy and a very brief overview of the training. And when we come back from this break, uh, you're going to meet a recent graduate who's actually out there doing the job. So please stay tuned. We'll be right back. You chose to ignore the speed limit. This is the next 60 minutes of your life. Speeding gets you nowhere fast. Look at this. The marijuana can mess you up. <laughs> right. We've been getting high for what? 15 years? Nothing's ever happened. Did I get into all the drugs and start mugging people? Nah, didn't do anything. In fact, I'd say I'm exactly the same as when I smoked my first joint. Eddie, did you even look for a job today? No, Ma. Marijuana can make nothing happen to you, too. Next time your friend insists on driving drunk, do whatever it takes to stop him. Slowly now, a little tiny bit. What a day for love. Love, love. It's a day for love. Love, love. What a day for love. It's a lovely day. The 90s are not the 60s. In a world this dangerous, there's no such thing as a harmless drug. Talk to your kids about marijuana. Hello and welcome back to the Indiana State Police Public Information Program. If you're just now tuning in with us, we've been talking about the fact that the Indiana State Police is currently accepting applications for an academy that will be starting March 31st, 1997. Uh, we started out our program speaking with Sergeant Nyla miller Cronk about the selection process and submitting your application, and we just finished speaking with Sergeant Dave Benjamin about the experiences one might expect out at the academy. And now it's uh, my privilege to introduce to you uh, Trooper Paul Baker from the Indianapolis Post. Paul, welcome to the program. Thank you, sir. It's good to have you here. Thank you. Now, glad to be here. Paul, you graduated from the, uh, one of the most recent state police academies that graduated June of 95. Right, the uh, 52nd class. 52nd class. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what your experiences were as far as uh, after finishing the academy, uh, the excitement there? I'm sure that your, your wife and uh, folks and everybody came to see that. What happened after the excitement of graduation? 
after graduation, uh, well, the day of graduation when you, uh, you're all, all done and you've uh, got your, your certificates and mm -hmm. you go home, you get all your equipment put away, your uniforms hung up and uh, get everything ready because you do go to work. Uh, I went the following weekend, I think I had three days and I started got a whole work. three days off after the academy. I had a whole three days off after the academy. Pretty gracious of them out. And uh, you come out and you're getting all your equipment put away and you, you uh, meet with your FTO. You either meet with your primary FTO, which is your f field training officer, or you, you'll uh, call him by telephone or he'll call and, uh, and you'll talk and see where you're going to meet and how you're going to make arrangements uh, later on down the road for when you do start riding with your primary FTO. Um, your first three, two to three weeks uh, you'll spend at the, the district at the post that you're assigned to and you'll uh, get familiar with the post, the people that work at the post. Uh, you'll go out with detectives, you'll go out, you'll uh, stay in the post with the uh, post commander and you'll see how his what his duties are and and like I said you'll you'll spend in all different areas you'll just spend a now, little bit of time. Now as I recall um, they still require you to go see an autopsy is that correct? Yes sir. And uh, that usually happens in the first several weeks also so there's probably things that people don't think about doing you think oh I graduate from the uh, police academy and they immediately issue me a car and I go to work but it's not like that is it? No, no, it isn't. It's a, it's a long time before you're, you're well, it seems it's a long time, seems but like it's relatively time. short. Uh, when you get your car and you're out on your own, you only have three months with the training officers, and, and then you uh, receive your, your car. So after that first several weeks, you spend a week or so with the dispatchers. You spend a week or so with the detectives. Uh, you also uh, work with the motor carrier inspectors, too. Is that correct? Right. You'll go out with the motor carrier and see how the, they do their jobs, and... Uh, You'll, uh, yeah, and we need to tell people that may, they may not know all of the terms. The motor carrier inspector, uh, they're the people that pull over the trucks, uh, that drive the uh, kind of aqua colored police vehicles, and they take care of all the truck inspections and very important job that they fulfill. So, that, in essence, you've spent that first three, four weeks learning more about the specifics of the department, and then finally you start out with your field training officer. Do you remember who your first one was? Oh, yeah. yes, sir. I did. You never it was forget my, that. my primary one. You, you never forget your primary field training officer. Oh, go ahead and give him a plug. <laughs> I don't think I can. Uh, I didn't have any bad, bad experiences with my primary. Oh, we had a good oh, time. Say, who was it? Oh, it was Kelly Lazell. He's oh, okay. out of District 52. And, uh, well, he's, uh, he's out here at the academy now, isn't he? Right. I believe he's a counselor right now and so. uh, he had talked about that when we were in the uh, training he, he uh, asked me what I thought of the Academy and how I how I liked it and uh, he was getting some points from me too from uh, so he could uh, have the experience of a counselor out here so that, well that's good then, though so the student got to teach the teacher that, that, that <laughs> yeah, for a little bit well. so you spent how much time with uh, Trooper Lazell initially uh, I think it's off and on time. You'll sp I spent three weeks at the start, and then I I went from or two weeks at the start, and then you'll go and you'll spend a week with a, a uh, another training officer, and then I go back. So I think my total time was a month or maybe a little over a month with my primary. Now the purpose officer. of going from one training officer to another, what's what's the reason for switching around? Well, there's there's a lot of different reasons. Uh, some of your training officers will be in different counties. You won't have them in the, in the same county, so you'll get the experience there of, of learning other counties, seeing how other counties operate. And uh, the other reasons are you'll see how each person operates. Each person is different. You'll learn good points, and not to say that there's bad points, but you'll learn things that maybe Just won't work for ways. you. Right, and this gives you a wide variety of, uh, of areas to work in and... and, and uh, how to just kind of rounds out the information you can exactly as I recall you know, the the way it was put to me is uh, pick out the best of what you see from each person you work with and you incorporate that into your own method of work right. so, now when you finished uh, the field training portion of it that was how long uh, field training was a total of three months roughly three months so then after that three months uh, then they call you up and say come pick up a car well, <laughs> almost. They, uh, you'll have those 
those three months and you're graded each day that you're, you're riding with an FTO and as long as your grades and everything go well and uh, you, you take a, uh, a final test then you'll uh, you get you get your car and you bring up a good point there that that the training and testing doesn't just end at the academy that there's still grading and evaluation and and a final uh, probationary uh, test that you right. have to take before you get your car uh, tell us how uh, what were your feelings the day you came and, and picked up your first state police car Oh, it was uh, excited. You're more excited. Some people would think, "May well, I'd be nervous and all," but you're more excited. You waited, the, you know, a long time for this day, and uh, you get your car, and uh, you go in. They'll uh, they'll talk to you about uh, driving, and not to forget about the skills that you've learned in the academy, and not to go out and and uh, get in any uh, accidents. You don't want to do that, and. Uh, you have an example to set. Exactly, exactly. And after you've, uh, they've, they've talked to you, then you get your cars assigned to you, you go out and uh, get in your car, and that day you, you pretty much, uh, depending on your district, that day's to yourself to get your car ready and put away. So the next day you go to work, it's, uh, you know where everything's at, and hopefully you've got everything in place that you need. Hopefully so by then. And speaking of, of going to work, you mentioned that uh, uh, you asked to be assigned at the Indian Indianapolis Post, is that correct? Right. And you spent your initially a little time working in Marion County? Right, I spent uh, roughly the first three to four months and I worked in Indianapolis. And now you're working in Shelby County, which is part of the Indianapolis Post. Right. So you like it there? Oh yes, I like it. Shelby County, it's my, uh, my home county and I was real fortunate to get that. It's, the, it's not often you get your first district or your home district sure. your first year, let alone your first county. And I, I got real fortunate that uh, openings and had come about at the time that they did. Well, Paul, I want to thank you very much for taking time in your schedule. And, and I know the people you were commenting, you came rushing in here. Uh, you just worked a, a accident scene this morning. It was raining on you. You were all concerned about how you look. Uh, you look great. And I know that you had to, uh, to uh, hustle to get over here. I know you drove at the speed limit, though. Yes, sir, and, I do. Uh, I appreciate the time that you took. I hope that uh, you have enjoyed this month's edition of the Indiana State Police Public Information Program. You've got a real quick overview of the selection process of what happens uh, once you're in the academy and now through courtesy of uh, Trooper Baker, uh, what it's like after you get out of the academy and the training that's involved. So if you are interested in a career in law enforcement and you think you would like it to be with the Indiana State Police, Remember the deadline is September 20th, 1996 to have your application in. If you miss that deadline, you can still submit your application for future academies. Until we see you at another program, thank you for listening. And remember, when you're out driving about your car or somebody else's car, buckle up. The life you save may be your own. Till next time, bye-bye.